why it is that the characters you know, go over from one life to another. Your character, is it something totally new you have developed, you know, from your parents, your upbringing, your schooling, or is there something even more than that, you know, coming from your previous lives, the previous existences? And people like uh, Carl Sagan kept on saying, extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. But the point was, who decides what an extraordinary claim is and what the level of evidence is? And it's amazing as a monk, you know, the experiences and the anecdotes which you have amassed over, what is it now, 43, 44 years of my monastic life. I'm not an easy believer. I'm more skeptical than anything else. But when the evidence is compelling, then you just have no choice but to accept it. The evidence is out there. Apparently that was X-Files. The truth is out there. And it's absolutely true. It's not flaky stuff. This is hard-nosed scientists who are investigating this. And so for me, I mean, it's obvious that there's things like reincarnation. There's people I know can remember their past lives. And there's usually two ways, no, three ways of this happens. One is like spontaneous. You just remember. And the best example of that was uh, this fellow called Roy Hudd. And you can get him on the internet, R-O-Y, second name H-U-D-D. He was a, a TV personality when I was growing up in UK. He was always on the, the TV. Comedian, very funny guy. But his story was that he'd been doing a show in London somewhere at a time when the local government installed a new one-way system, you know, to try and get the traffic to move a bit more um, clearly or smoothly. And because some usual routes were blocked, he got lost. He was driving around, he got lost, he didn't know the way to get home, getting more and more lost. He turned a corner and that's when it happened. He had the hairs on the back of his head stood up. Now that never happens to a monk because we don't have hairs. <laughs> but anyway, you know, he would still feel this is weird, this is strange. And he was just so weird, so strange, he'd never been down this street before in this life. But he remembered it from his previous life. And it all flooded back to him. And he went to the house where he'd lived for many, many years before. Now, in those houses and those places in London, they have the, uh, the little blue circular disc which shows who lived there before. And they're very interesting. The last time I was in London, close to Russell Square, there was a big disc in there, and in this house lived the mistress of Charles II. The mistress! That wasn't very nice, but, you know, she was famous enough, they put it on, the, on there. So, so be very careful what you do, because, you know, sometimes, that, you know, if you... Anyway, back to... <laughs> back to this. There was a big blue sign outside the house because of his past life, he was also a celebrity. And his past life was as a, probably the most famous music hall entertainer of his generation. In the times when people would go not to pubs or clubs, it was like the music hall where lots of beer, entertainers, his name was Dan Leno, L-E-N-O. And that was a plaque which actually said he recognized that was his house before. And he knocked on the door and his people opened the door and this, you're Roy Hudd, we know you, we see you on the telly. What are you doing here? At which he told them 
He lived here before. You haven't lived here before. We've been living in this house for 30, 40 years. But I was here before you. And because he was well known, recognized, they let him into the house and he took him all around the house showing what it was like before. He remembered very clear memories, even where he did his rehearsing in one of those rooms in front of the mirror. So, there was a memory from a very well-known personality and now he's written books about Dan Lino. It's supposed to be historical books, but he has information which you cannot get from any other source except if you've been there before. And the interesting part of that is in his previous life he was a comedian, an entertainer. And in this life, he's a comedian, an entertainer. So sometimes I wonder, because I've been telling jokes before I came in here, what was I before I became a monk in this life? <laughs> but the characters especially, they carry on from life to life. And that was the interesting part, because Yes, we do have many lives, but the personality, the character, who you are today is a connection with who you were before and that is the fascinating part. When you are born into this world, you are not an empty, clean slate. You come with history. 